Okay, thanks everyone. Um, we're just going to go uh, through a quick introduction because um, you have three presenters today. And, uh, and then I'll go through the presentation uh, in three parts. So, Matsumoto, if you can introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Kentaro Matsumoto from KDDI. Uh, in KDDI, I'm doing uh, Cloud Architect. Hi, this is Uesaka. Uh, I'm coming from the NEC. I'm a general manager of the uh, Platform Service Division. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Pierre Mathis, uh, Director of Telco Solutions, globally at Red Hat. And um, basically, my responsibility at Charter Red Hat is to work uh, with all the Tier 1 operators globally and partners in the telco ecosystem. Um, the way I got into Red Hat was before the Red Hat, I was through a company called Innovance. Uh, and then we got acquired by Red Hat. And Inavance was, uh, at the time, the seventh largest uh, OpenStack contributor. Uh, and so we were doing a lot of really interesting, advanced thing. Um, and we were doing this with about 50 engineers. So it's pretty re remarkable with the amount of people, how we were able to transform uh, in the way we were contributing code. We're really happy that we made the transition to uh, Red Hat. And I'll, I'll show you a few things of how these emanated into the platform. But the first thing I'd like to announce is, I mean, this is fresh off the press. Uh, as you can see, dated May 8 in Tokyo. So we announced uh, today that we successfully completed uh, our trials with NEC and KDDI on their next gen platform for IoT and 5G. Um, so it's great to see how far OpenStack has come along. Uh, and now we're really looking to do bleeding edge things on the OpenStack platform. So it was a very, very successful launch. Um, namely, you know, if I go back to my days of uh, OpenStack version 6, I, I remember, you know, at Verizon and AT&T really struggling with the various components uh, of OpenStack. Uh, I, I remember vividly Keystone uh, kept crashing because it was flooded by the network. I mean, and if you look at where we're at today uh, with OpenStack, it's been pretty remarkable. And one of the things that I don't know if people understand is this was a frustration I had uh, a while back was how do we have people participate in the upstream and downstream in contribution to OpenStack? And you know, a lot of times you know, uh, companies and telcos view us as kind of the brokers uh, to help them to get the features and functions in OpenStack. But what we really want to do is to go ahead of this and, and have a collaboration model and a platform to do so. And so you know, a lot of times people don't understand the mechanism um, uh, of how the secret sauce gets made in OpenStack, right? How do we take it from trunk, package it in RDO, uh, and then package it into our Red Hat OpenStack platform? That takes a lot of time. Um, and, you know, th th one of the things that we work really, really hard is to make sure that we, we take the bugs and the fixes and make sure it, we have stable code. And that takes, uh, you know, a good six, six months to do. So, you know, one of the ways to speed up that process uh, is through uh, the next platform that we're going to be launching soon is around DCI. So it's taking the concept of CI, CD, and basically baking it in into a platform into OpenStack. And this is what we've uh, really worked hard with the NEC team, and I think it helped in the evolution and the deployment uh, of OpenStack at, in the KDDI implementation. And so this enables us, this platform that we use with partners, enable us to essentially participate. So when we see, uh, when we have bug fix, we're able to put it into the platform. Another thing that we're able to do is, if you see through the repository, we have this continuous integration repository. And this is where we put all our tests, right? We put our Rally, Tempest, Browbeat, and we even put our certification from Red Hat inside the test. And so the benefit of this is that we, we use the notion of triple O, under cloud, over cloud. And this is where we work with our OSP director to basically run those tests. Um, the beauty of this is that it used to take about a month or so to certify OpenStack. We can now do it over a weekend. And so this has been very, very effective in deploying and managing. And now what we can start doing is test continuously. 
right? We don't have to wait for the next version. If we do something from a VNF perspective we need to add, we can then test how is this going to break? Where are the things that are going to break? What version? And so we have a very efficient way of collaborating with our partners in making sure that we have a way to basically do the, uh, the, the patches and fix upstream and then downstream as part of our open uh, first uh, stream first uh, strategy. So this has been a very, very successful platform, and we're going to see a lot of this. So the plan for Red Hat is to bring this into the mainstream uh, in version 12, and so you'll see a lot of that coming uh, in the near future. But this is one of the areas I think was uh, very beneficial for us to working and collaborating. So this is uh, what I had for the moment, so I'll hand it over, and then maybe we can go dig uh, through the NEC piece, and then we're going to go through the KDDI, talk a bit about the architecture, and then we'll open up for Q&A sessions, okay? Okay, uh, next turn. So I will uh, explain the uh, NEC Cloud System OSS building model. Uh, first of all, uh, reason why NEC to collaborate, uh, uh, adapt uh, Red Hat OpenStack platform, uh, because we have a, a over the 10 years relationship to support the uh, open mission critical system uh, from the uh, Linux operating system support. Right now, uh, we are supporting an open, so, uh, open stack uh, platform. So, uh, this is a uh, OSS based cloud infrastructure building solution. We call the uh, NEC cloud system. And uh, uh, as you know, the uh, OSS is a OSS. That means uh, you can download and uh, you can integrate by yourself. But uh, it's very difficult to uh, optimize for uh, users' demand. NEC have a lot of experiences uh, to integrate and uh, to manage by ourselves. Uh, NEC uh, launched a uh, public cloud solution uh, since 2014. And, uh, NEC uh, announced uh, to uh, promote and uh, accelerate uh, OP uh, NFV solution with uh, Red Hat uh, since 2015. And then uh, we are uh, announced a uh, NEC cloud system uh, 2016. Such kind of way, uh, we, are, uh, we have some knowledge uh, how to uh, integrate and uh, manage and uh, operate to use open source software. That is not only OpenStack, but also the Zabbix type of monitoring system and the Bacula type of backup system. So uh, NEC integrates such kind of a proprietary uh, open source software to realize uh, cloud environment. So uh, NEC provides three type of services. One is a building uh, integration service. And the uh, uh, second one is a uh, support service. Uh, NEC is uh, one of hardware vendors. Uh, definitely, we can support uh, our NEC server storage network. But <laughs> uh, our hardware is not so popular out of Japan. In such case, maybe user want to use as a third party the hardware uh, server storage network. But NEC cloud system or support a such kind of much vendor platform to integrate OpenStack. And then, uh, as you know, the, uh, if user want to launch the cloud environment by themselves, they don't have enough uh, management knowledge. NEC have uh, such knowledge. And uh, NEC provide uh, such managed service by NEC itself, or NEC are uh, offered to uh, uh, adapt our knowledge by uh, uh, for uh, customer environment. Such kind of way, open source is an open source. Everyone can use that. But uh, if user want to use uh, this um, uh, open source software environment by themselves, NEC can help this uh, 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 environment. Uh, next slide is the uh, uh, NEC cloud system and the NFV stack. Uh, it, this is a very busy, but the uh, base is uh, Etsy NFV architecture. Our uh, right side is a uh, uh, mono area. Uh, NEC NetPracker uh, provides this mono capability. 
and then a uh, beam. Uh, Red Hat OpenStack platform present this beam capability. And the uh, NVA area, uh, Red Hat virtualization, that is a KVM, uh, Red Hat support it, and uh, uh, SDS, software defined storage area, uh, we adapt uh, Red Hat safe storage. And uh, uh, network area, uh, NEC is one of our uh, platinum member of uh, Open Daylight. We adapt uh, Open Daylight uh, SDN controller to that. And uh, uh, telco area, uh, their key factor is uh, high performance. We provide a DPDK, uh, OBS DPDK, and the SROIOV type of uh, pass through uh, network uh, uh, capability. Such kind of way, uh, NFBA and the BIM, uh, NEC cloud system cover this area. And uh, uh, top of uh, uh, box, uh, which is a OSS BSS area, uh, NEC net uh, provider this capability. And uh, uh, NFE, a, 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 a VNF, NEC itself has a several uh, VNF, but uh, user want to use another uh, other third parties uh, N VNF. Definitely, we can support such or third parties VNF onboarding. Uh, next slide is an uh, overview of NEC Cloud or solution. Uh, left side is a uh, NEC Cloud ES, uh, which is a, a, a public cloud solution. Uh, we have a two type of environment. One is a HA, which is based on the VMware. And the second one is a, a standard, uh, which is based on the uh, OpenStack. And the right side, uh, NEC Cloud system is a on-promise cloud solution. Uh, we have our, our three type of uh, uh, on-promise cloud solution. One is a build OSS building model. Uh, second one is a commercial product building model. This is a VMware base. And the uh, uh, cloud platform suite is a, 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 a vertical solution to realize a, a cloud uh, solution. Such kind of way, uh, NEC support a uh, public cloud and uh, on-promise. Cloud. And uh, we can definitely support a uh, uh, hybrid cloud environment. And then NEC support the uh, uh, SOR type of applications uh, environment and the uh, SOE type of uh, cloud native application environment by this NEC cloud solution. And the uh, uh, OSS or part, we collaborate with uh, our Red Hat and uh, we adapt. Uh, uh, OpenStack and the safe and the OpenShift and the Ansible. OpenShift. So, uh, uh, as you know, the uh, user want to realize that is not only ears, but also the parts and the SaaS. Such kind of way, uh, we need to adapt a more uh, upper side solution uh, to, uh, for customer demand. Such kind of way, uh, we can support uh, uh, such kind of requirement. Uh, next slide, uh, as you know, the OpenStack uh, uh, re uh, will release uh, two times per year. Uh, version up is a very serious uh, issue. And the uh, uh, user don't want to uh, stop the uh, current uh, uh, system. NEC uh, try to uh, uh, achieve uh, loading upgrade without zero downtime. So, uh, several steps are there, uh, but uh, uh, we prepared uh, some automation tool which is presented by Ansible Playbook. Uh, this operation will be done by within the one hour. Such kind of way, uh, we are prepared uh, some uh, uh, best practice and uh, we contribute to this uh, uh, process and the tool to the upstream.
So uh, next slide is an ongoing project with KDDI. Uh, after my our, uh, presentation, Matsumoto-san will uh, explain uh, in detail. Uh, right now, we're uh, collaborating two project with uh, KDDI. One is a distributed monitoring and uh, analysis project, and the second one is a uh, uh, zone migrations project. Uh, especially zone migration project, uh, we are contributing OpenStack Watcher project to realize a, uh, um, how can I say, uh, if you want to uh, uh, maintenance hardware, uh, some uh, VM need to move to the another hardware. That is not only VM image, but also the uh, data image. Uh, Watcher uh, have uh, some capability to realize uh, such kind of uh, uh, requirement. We are, uh, but uh, before uh, Watcher, uh, Okata cycle Watcher version uh, not enough to realize uh, such kind of capability. NHC uh, contribute new uh, enhancement to realize such zone migrations uh, capability. And uh, uh, we hope to, uh, 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 to uh, adapt and uh, uh, apply this our uh, new technology, uh, Pike cycle, I hope. Yeah, let me hear that. Excuse me. Okay. Oh, uh, I'm Kentaro Matsumoto from KDDI. So we had a big POC, OpenStack POC with Red Hat and NEC. And today I will uh, introduce about our achievement. Uh, this is my agenda of my 10 minutes. So about KDDI and overview of this POC and what we achieved in POC. So at first, about KDDI. So do you know uh, KDDI? So could you raise your hand if you know KDDI? Okay, thank you very much. I'm happy so many people know my company. So I'm in home, I feel home, though it is United States. Uh, anyway, uh, we are second biggest telecom company in Japan. And our main business is Japanese domestic and mobile, but we are doing global business. So we have over 100 offices all over the world, and we have many data centers. Uh, we call it telehouse. So we have 45 data centers all over the world. Okay, uh, next topic, uh, overview of this POC. So at first, as background, we have hundreds of internal IT systems uh, separately on different hardware. So it is a typical silo type structure. So we spend, we spend a lot of cost for operation and maintenance. So we need to reduce these costs. So this is our concept of new uh, infrastructure we will have huge hardware pool, uh, maybe uh, it will be thousands of servers, and we developed infrastructure process communicator, and using this, we can easily assign hardware to OpenStack environment, or VMA ESXi environment, or bare metal environment. So many systems on huge one hardware pool, we will reduce the cost of management. 
And using this, uh, we developed OpenStack POC environment. And we did various kinds of uh, tests uh, to check if our workload can Running, can run on OpenStack environment. For example, we did IPv6 test and multi site authentication test and so on. But today, I want to introduce these three things. Uh, our special um, achievement. Uh, first is flexible hardware assignment. And second is hardware maintenance without service outage. We call it zone migration and uh, um, distributed monitoring and analysis. So first thing we achieved is flexible hardware assignment. So let me uh, explain about use case. So in this use case, please uh, see the picture. Uh, there is OpenStack environment, and we are running application number one and number two. And we want to run new application number five. But uh, we don't have enough uh, resources, enough servers on OpenStack environment. So what uh, can we do? At first, we add hardware from hardware pool to OpenStack IaaS environment by IPC for extension. And next, configure these hardware as OpenStack compute node, or OpenStack controller node, or SDS like Ceph uh, in OpenStack environment. So we can um, do BIOS setting or install operating system, install operating operating systems. We can install uh, middleware and configure various kind of things and ready to use. And at last, we can run new application number five on new computer nodes. This is a concept of flexible hardware assignment and if we uh, want to quit application number five, we can easily remove hardware from OpenStack environment and return it to a uh, huge hardware pool. Okay, uh, second thing we, we achieved is hardware maintenance without service outage. We call it zone migration. So as background, uh, we already have IaaS environment, and we have many IaaS tenants, uh, owner of applications. If we want to do maintenance of hardware, uh, for example, BIOS problem or KVM security problems, uh, we have to negotiate with our tenants, application owners, about maintenance because we need, sometimes we need reboot the hardware and if uh, these tenants are not cloud native applications, uh, it, uh, there is uh, service outage. So for us, it is very hard to negotiate uh, a lot of tenants about maintenance. So we are thinking of this structure. So let me explain this use case. So in this use case, uh, there is OpenStack environment and we are running application number one and application number two. And we want to do hardware maintenance of OpenStack environment. So what we can do? So at first, add hardware on OpenStack IaaS environment for maintenance and configure these hardware as computer nodes. And next, move applications. Application means virtual machines or Cinder volumes. So these, move these applications to new compute nodes or storages. 
like this. So after that, the left side computer nodes, original computer nodes, there is no application, no virtual machines, or no vo volumes, so we can do maintenance very easily. So, uh, so there is original zone, and we add maintenance zone, and we move uh, resources, workloads, from original zone to maintenance zone, so we call it zone migration. So to realize this structure, we use a various, various kinds of OpenStack technology, technologies like Nova Live Migration, Nova Cold Migration, Cinder Volume Migration, and to schedule these migration, we are using uh, OpenStack Watcher project, as Wesaka-san explained. And so we have a plan to contribute this structure to OpenStack upstream. And last thing we achieved is distributed monitoring and analysis. So usual monitoring system like Zabbix, there is monitoring servers and there are monitoring agents and uh, monitoring process is running uh, mainly at monitoring servers. But in this structure, monitoring process is uh, running at monitoring agent, each computer node, and only result is sent to central DB. So monitoring process is distributed to each computer node. So we can realize uh, real-time monitoring, and it is very scalable solution. So we have dedicated a session about it on Wednesday uh, at noon, distributed monitoring and analysis for telecom requirements. So if you have an interest, please come to this session. So I explained about uh, POC result. So now, uh, using this uh, result and experience we got, um, we continue to design and um, develop our new IT um, uh, infrastructure. Uh, thank you. Okay. Exactly. Any questions? Uh, yes, uh, I would just ask you to go to the microphone. That would be great because we're recording, so I want to record the questions as well. So uh, at, at, at your right, there's a, a diagram called the DCI. Correct. So what, what the DCI stands for? Oh, uh, distributed continuous integration. Same for CI, right? Continuous integration, continuous development. So that's uh, that's how we call it. Any other questions? That was an easy one. Yeah, okay, great. Fred Herman from Red Hat. Uh, I'm curious about uh, the pool of hardware you have and the kind of connectivity you have set up in order to be able automatically to allocate resources like that to OpenStack clusters and so on. I mean, is it a special, uh, okay. are all these hardware already uh, interconnected together? So, so basically, you know, so, um, friend, so essentially, if I understood correctly, so you want to know the interconnectivity between the various nodes, and are they pre-configured, or do you add the hardware and the network, or you just add pools with an existing network infrastructure? So how, how is KDDI managing this? Okay. Uh, let me answer very roughly. Uh, of course, uh, the physically all servers are connected to physical network, so we can dynamically set up a virtual network, maybe VLAN or VXLAN, these kinds of things. So, and we can uh, assign hardware and separate uh, each tenant. Answer your question. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, one of the things we we didn't talk about, and I think um, a lot of times, and I've seen this uh, at, at not only KDDI but a lot of other uh, uh, partners and clients, is you know the notion that we think that NFV um, and going down the NFV path is just a technology play. And what we see, what we tend to see, is um, there's a lot of transformation that occurs from a process standpoint. How do we work? How do we work in agile teams, right? So that there's a big change of how we collaborate together. Um, so the process is one of them, but also um, you know the mindset um, and what we can do with this, right? And so one of the key things with this NFE platform is really how can we go faster to market with new services and new platforms, and it really changes the way how we drive business. And you know, for a lot of clients, uh, NFV is a very transformational project, uh, both how we work inside the company and how we develop and deploy new services. And that's something I think we kind of glance over a lot. We think that it's just a technology play, but actually it really changes the culture and the way we do things inside the company. And also from a business standpoint of how we deliver services faster. And, and, you know, at first, a lot of clients think that, you know, OpenStack is really a cost play. Uh, and actually, it turns out that it's a revenue play uh, because it enables you to develop and deploy these services at a much faster pace and cadence. And, you know, if you ask the telcos today, you know, who are they competing with? And a lot of them will tell you the folks that they're competing with are really the fangs or the bat, depending on which side of the ocean you are. They're the fangs are the Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. And then, you know, you got the, the, the Baidu, Tencent, and Alibaba over on the other side. And so you have this pressure, and, you know, and they use NFV functions to deploy these new services in a very, very effective way. And this is why I think these projects are very exciting to see them emerge is that we're going to start seeing a lot of new services coming from these platforms uh, from KDDI. Uh, so the question for the KDDI person. So this is going to be a POC, right? That when this model or this uh, um, technology is going to be deployed into the production system? Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, I'm not sure so when it is, but maybe soon. <laughs> <laughs> Very lovely answer, but sorry. <laughs> he must be a KDDI customer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So that's it. All right, so I think. Uh, that's it, no more questions. Going once, going twice. All right, sold. All right, thank you very much. That concludes the session. Thank you very thank you much. much.